Okay, uh, good afternoon, Year 10. Hope you're well. Uh, day two of remote learning. I uh, hope yesterday went okay. Um, feels a little bit weird talking to you through a, through a screen, but we're going to have to go with this. Um, most lessons I'm going to try and do a video like this. Um, I'm going to keep the OneNote uh, page going so you can keep your notes up to date and it will just continue as normal, to be honest, and we'll just go with it. I know you're going to try to treat this seriously. We could be doing it for a little while. And the more effort you put in, obviously, the more you get out. Um, most of the work I set will probably be on Hegarty or Dr. Frost. Uh, there might be some occasions when, when I use the textbook as well. So hopefully you've got a copy of that. Where I can, I'll, I'll put screenshots of the textbook as well in case you, some of you have left it at, high, at school. Um, but we'll make it work. Okay, now I do expect some of you may end up running out of space with your exercise book. If that does happen, please just write on paper and we can put that together when you're back in school uh, or or if you could try and get a maths book or a book from uh, from your parents or, or order one in online, that, that would work well as well. Okay, right, today we're going to start like we always do with a Corbett 5 a day. So I'm going to give you uh, five minutes, uh, five minutes to have a go at this. And when you're ready, it should have it should sit in the background already. You can do this on a rough bit of paper. When you're ready, off you go.
Okay guys, that's about time. Uh, if you need a little bit longer, just do pause, pause the video, that's fine, but I think you should have probably done that in about that time period. Uh, this last question, you obviously needed a, a compass and a ruler there. Um, so hopefully you've got one of those. Now, I'm gonna scroll down in a second, you can mark your own, uh, and here we go. So obviously mark your own. Um, this is common. Sure, sort of the screenshots are lost a little bit. Anyway, the first question, yeah, x is less than 2.25, less than or equal to, which means the largest integer is two. Ordinary number is that. Uh, standard form, 9.4 times 10 to the five. This one here, make w the subject, is sort of cut off a little bit at the bottom, but it should be 2a minus seven over three. There you go. And the last question, um, again, we've lost a little bit of, let's just come out of here and then back in, hopefully that's, um, the last question there was, it should have been a line passing through that point there. Okay, so give yourself a score. I think that's out of one, two, three, four, five, six. Give yourself a score out of six and um, then go back to the front of your books and we'll start the lesson. Okay, uh, today's session is on volume. So please, can you put a margin please? Nice title of volume. The date is the 24th of March 2020 okay um, now there are some volumes formulas of volume that you need to uh, know so we're going to start with the most basic which is prisms now prisms are shapes that have the same cross section all the way through I mean you've seen this uh, probably even in primary school so that would be an example of a prism cuboid might be a prism you might have a triangular prism Something like this, okay. Um, anything that with the same shape, all running all the way through the shape, is considered a prism. Now, the volume of a prism is the cross-sectional area, which um, is often known as the CSA for short, times the depth or the height. Okay, so that's a prism. I'm sure, you know that one. And a special type of prism is a cylinder. Cylinder. Now that is a prism because it's a circular based prism. So there's a cylinder and the volume of a cylinder, well it's the CSA times the depth, so it's pi r squared times the height or the depth and that's a cylinder. And these two you need to learn. Those formulas are not given in uh, the GCSE. Now there are some special shapes uh, as well that we, need to, that we need to know. So we need to know how to work out the volume of a sphere a sphere often like a 3d circle like that and the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed okay we'll be using that later that's what the volume of a sphere is we also need to know how to work out the volume of a pyramid a pyramid which might be a source maybe something like this um, so a pyramid there and a pyramid is a third of a cuboid. So it's a third of a cuboid, which is quite special. Um, but it always you can always fit three pyramids into a cuboid. So therefore the volume is a third um, base times height. Okay, that's a pyramid. And then you've got a special type of pyramid, which is a cone. It's like a circular based pyramid, so a cone. And a cone is a third of a cylinder. So therefore the volume is equal to a third uh, times pi r squared times the height. Okay, now it's important that you recognize that that is the perpendicular height, um, which we'll see later on why that's important. A lot of people use the wrong height for the, the volume of a cone. Now these three shapes here this, these formulas are given, okay, formulas given. So you don't need to learn them, although it's good practice to know what they are. Formulas given in GCSE, okay, they're given. So you don't need to learn those, but it's good practice um, to, to know what they are for just for your own use, okay? Right, we're gonna look at a few examples now. So 
EG1, start off with a nice easy one. I imagine I've got a, a cylinder. Okay, let's say the height of the cylinder is uh, five meters and the radius is three meters. The question might be find the volume of the cylinder. Find the volume of the cylinder. Okay. Right, I'm going to give you a little have a go, have a think about that in a second. I'm going to put the second example up as well. And we've got a sphere this time. And the volume of the sphere, volume of the sphere is equal to 500 meters cubed. Find the radius of the sphere. So they're the two examples we're going to be looking at. Maybe pause the video and see if you can work out both of those uh, before we before we reveal the answer. So if you want to do that, do pause it now. Okay. But right here we go. So the first one, the answer. This one's quite basic to be honest. So you go to your formula of the cylinder. The volume is equal to pi r squared h. So in this case, the volume is pi r squared. So three squared times five which is going to be 9 times 5, which is 45 pi meters cubed. Now I'm going to leave it in terms of pi. Depending on the question, it might ask it in terms of pi. It might ask it for a decimal place, significant figure. You've got to read the question carefully. That's the answer to the first one. So for work, this is slightly more advanced, working out the radius from the volume. It's working backwards, but we're working exactly the same way. So the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So therefore it is 500 uh, meters cubed equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now again I'm imagining because the worst case is this would be in the non-calculator paper. So a little bit of a tip when you're solving questions with fractions always multiply by that fraction first. So I'm going to multiply by 3. So I get 1500 is equal to 4 pi R cubed. Now at this point I can divide by 4 pi and I get 1500 over 4 pi equals r cubed. Okay and then I'm going to cube root both sides. So the cube root of 1500 over 4 pi would equal r. Now again non-calculator you might want to leave it like that. But to be honest, this would probably be more likely in a calculator paper, and then you would need to find the, the decimal equivalent of that answer. Okay. Right, okay, what I want you to do, please can you copy those both examples down? You might need to sort of um, work your way back through the video and pause it at various points, but they're two really, really good examples to, to do. And in terms of practice questions today, uh, everything I set is going to be on Hegarty. I've set you some tasks on Hegarty. That you need to complete. Um, now this is complete for Wednesday so complete for tomorrow but I really want you to do most of them in now in your lesson time so try and do as much as you can in lesson now and then anything you don't finish you'll be able to complete for homework. You don't need to sketch so you don't, don't need to sketch the shapes but must show full working. Boom, but show full working. Okay, there's a various section of uh, different shapes and volumes to find there. Um, I what you do not need to scan in and send in your working today, but I may ask you to do that in future lessons. So just be aware of that. Uh, also, what would be really helpful is if um, if you've got any any comments or tips on on how I can improve these videos, uh, that would be really helpful for me and hopefully we can get to a position where these are really good by the end of this process. Um, and then you've also got things to look back on if you need them for notes as well. Okay, well good luck guys. I'll speak to you again tomorrow, which is Wednesday, and tomorrow we'll be doing problem solving ones. So uh, questions that are more wordy and that involve multiple shapes uh, and they're a bit more advanced. So that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. But until then, um, stay safe and I will speak to you tomorrow. Thanks guys.